Outcomes for patients with aggressive non-Hodgkin's lymphoma really depends on one thing, and that is whether they are chemosensitive or not. So here at CASH 2016, one of the late-breaking trials is an evaluation of an investigational therapy being evaluated in the pivotal phase two Zuma one trial. And to do this, I am with uh, Dr. Satva Nilapu, who is an MD and an associate professor and director of the laboratory and translational research in the Department of Lymphoma and Myeloma at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. Okay, the agent here is KTEC19. Can you talk to me about that first? Yes, yeah, so KTEC19 is a form of anti-CD19 CAR T-cell therapy. So it's basically genetically engineered T-cells where we engineer the T-cells taken from the patient with a uh, construct called KTEC19. It has two parts to it. So there is the part that sticks out of the cell, uh, which recognizes the, it's an antibody that recognizes the CD19 expressed on the surface of the tumor cell. And there's an intracellular part that provides the activation signal to the uh, T cell when the CD19 is recognized on the surface of the tumor cell. So the intracellular part has two parts to it. So there is uh, the CD3 zeta chain, which provides the signal one for the activation of the T cell. And there's the CD28 domain, which provides signal two for activation of the T cell. Now, Zuma one enrolled patients with chemorefractory aggressive NHL into two cohorts, and you're presenting pool data here. Tell me about the two cohorts. Yeah. So the Zuma one has uh, two cohorts. Cohort one included patients with diffuse large B cell lymphoma, and cohort two included patients with transformed follicular lymphoma and primary mediastinal B cell lymphoma. So uh, to be eligible for this trial, the patient had to have refractory disease, which was defined as refractory to uh, the last line of therapy, or they should have relapsed within one year after autologous stem cell transplantation. So what we are presenting here today uh, is, is to look at the outcomes in these patients at the time of interim analysis. In the pre-specified interim analysis, there were 51 patients with diffuse large B cell lymphoma uh, that qualified uh, and what we observed in these 51 patients with diffuse large B cell lymphoma is a best overall response rate of 76% and a complete response rate of 47%. So this resp complete response rate is actually nearly six times higher than what's been observed historically in this patient population. Now the p-value on this was 0 0.0001. That's correct. So how many months were, were, was follow-up on this? So. Uh, these 51 patients were followed for a minimum of three months. So that was a pre-specified interim analysis on the study. Um, and further follow-up is ongoing. So do you have patients who are on this for a longer period of time? Absolutely. So we have uh, several patients going on for several months, uh, what we show. Um, but on the Zuma one phase one portion of the study, we have patients that have uh, ongoing complete remission for at least a year or more. Now, this product was also tested previously in uh, single institutions trials, and they found patients that achieve a complete remission can have ongoing remissions nearly four years later. Wow. So what else have you learned from all of this in terms of either how patients react, how easy it is to give, how responsive it is, quickly, long? I mean, what have you learned? So, so the, the, the product is associated with some side effects. Uh, there are two common side effects that we see. So one is the cytokine release syndrome, mm -hmm. uh, which typically manifests as fever and body aches. A few patients might develop a uh, drop in the blood pressure or shortness of breath, but the majority have really grade one and grade two cytokine release syndrome. In fact, we found only 13% of these patients can have uh, develop grade three or higher cytokine release syndrome. Now, the second common side effect that we see are neurological side effects. Uh, this typically manifests as confusion and delirium um, and sometimes uh, difficulty in uh, speaking. Uh, even the neurological events are typically grade one to grade two, but 29% uh, of the patients had grade three or higher neurological events. And does this reverse once the agent is dropped? Yeah, these side effects are, are completely reversible in the majority of the patients. So, so, so we have three patients that have a very mild grade one memory impairment and uh, two of them with ongoing uh, tremors. So what's next? So, so I think while this product uh, appears to induce a very high overall response rate, there is still room for improvement. 
uh, to improve the complete response rates in these patients. Um, and I think uh, we are currently looking at combination trials to try and further improve the complete response rate. We are also doing extensive biomarker analysis to try and understand why some patients relapse after achieving a complete remission or uh, after achieving a partial remission. In addition, we are also doing extensive biomarker analysis uh, to try and understand what causes, what are the main drivers for cytokine release syndrome and the neurological events to try and make this even more safer. Well, do you also have any idea yet in terms of the difference between that 47% who have go into complete remission and those who don't? Do you know anything about? That's a very important question. So, so at this point, uh, we, we, uh, we are still analyzing those samples. Uh, so that's, I think, would be very important to try and understand why some patients don't respond, and that will drive our next generation trials on how to further improve this therapy. It should be exciting. It's very exciting. And for ASH Clinical News, we have a variety of stories here from ASH 2016 in San Diego. Please look both online and in print for ASH Clinical News. I'm Rick McGuire.